All right. So I'm gonna do a video today. Um, I've been watching a couple videos about tight group powder. Um, it's pretty much become my favorite pistol powder. I used to use a lot of Unique and uh, I switched to tight group because there was no Unique on the shelves. And um, it just really has uh, been a good goer for me. It's really clean. Um, it's really good in all the short barreled pistols that I use. I mean, it's completely burnt. I <laughs> I think before the bullets even uh, out of the cartridge, but I mean, that's a engineering question. Um, I've been through it already in another video. Uh, my nine millimeter pistol actually has a 357 bore. And um, what that means is that I'm perfectly safe shooting um, you know, 357.5 and 357 bullets out of that gun. I've yet to even load 9mm bullets for that gun. Um, but just in my short amount of testing, the uh, 357 caliber bullets shoot way better than the uh, 355 caliber ones. Uh, but what I'm going to do, this is, a, this is a question for the powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up every single one of these bullets with the same charge weight. I'm going to load them with the maximum charge weight for 125 grain berries. And I'm going to load all four of these bullets to 4.2 grains of tight group. And I'm going to shoot all of them through the chronograph and all of them at a target and go over the results and maybe we will learn something together about tight group powder. Here's the charged cases, just in case you guys were interested. There is not a lot of powder in those dudes. So, so they say do a visual inspection before you load this stuff because double charges are pretty dangerous. What I do is when I've got a full loading block, I just take and I load five with a charge at a time and then put a bullet on them. Uh, but with doing such a small lot, I can just have them here and then shift them from one side to the other as I uh, charge them. So that way I don't get mixed up. Okay, we've got bullets seated. Um, I seated them all the same. So that put the 110 and the 125 XTPs at 1.080 inches overall. And that put both of the berries, even though they're a different bullet style, that put these um, 115 9 millimeter round nose and these 125 plated flat points at the same exact overall length, which is 1.060. And now that bullet seeding, the actual manufacturing is over, I'm going to factory crimp them and they actually grow a little bit when I crimp them. I doubt the nine millimeter ones will. These did not take much pressure to seat. And as you can see, there's a pretty good, let's get a good background here. There's a pretty good bulge on the 38 cases. And so these actually, the factory crimp die actually squishes them pretty good, but I doubt it's going to do much to this. So these probably will not, will not grow much. All right. So we've got ammo manufactured. We've got primed with Fiocchi. Everything's seated the same. Everything's crimped. Everything has the same charge weight. I'm going to write out a little list for this so I don't get mixed up and put them in some zippy bags and we are gonna be out to the range. All right, so we're heading out to the old uh, testing grounds here. Shouldn't be a super long trip. I'm just gonna blow through this and have a little discussion about it later. So we'll get on out here, see if I can get my chronograph rigged up. I got, I learned if I put plastic sacks over the top of my chronograph, then uh, it'll still read the bullets going past the white backdrop, but it keeps my, my photo eyes from getting uh, little rain droplets on them and then throwing errors all the time. So we'll get out there and see what it says. It seems to struggle a lot less with pistol bullets than it does with rifle bullets. I mean, they're going a third of the speed and they're three times, four times the size. So we'll just get out there and 
have a good time. What do you think? I got a partner with me today. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. This is the 110 grain Hornady XTP with 4.2 grains of tight group. Error. Error. One thousand twenty three. One thousand thirty four. One thousand twenty six. One hundred and fifteen grain berries plated round nose, nine millimeter. 943 1009 990 error error hey now I've got 125 grain flat point plated Berries, 357 caliber. Nine eighty nine. Nine eighty four. One thousand thirty seven. One thousand thirty six. Error. Hornady, one hundred and twenty five grain. Jacketed hull point XTP. Error. 1024. 1009. Error. 1063. Boy. And those shot considerably different than the others. And better. Those shot the best out of the whole bunch. Error. 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 1,005. Error. What a bummer on the errors. That chronograph really just... Gives me fits some days. All right, you'll have to excuse me. These targets are a little wet. It was rainy out there. That whole trip just didn't go quite exactly how I hoped it would, but yeah, fight with various things as you go. Um, this was uh, Sadie's pistol, Sadie shooting Sadie's pistol. Me shooting the uh, the berries plated 125 grain flat points, the 357 caliber bullets. Um, and then this was me shooting Sadie's pistol, the 125 grain XTP jacketed hollow points. And uh, seemed to do pretty good. I mean, offhand at 10 yards. And then these two Sadie shot out of this magazine at this target. So, I mean, I guess you could just kind of overlay that there and it's pretty legit. Okay, so that is pretty much as expected. They're... Very similar pistols made by the same manufacturer, but they are they are different. Okay, so for what little numbers we got, I did some crunching. So for the 110 grain 357 caliber XTP, we got an average velocity of 1,028 feet per second. For the 356 caliber 115 grain plated round nose, we got an average of 981 feet per second. 
For the 125 grain, 357 caliber plated flat point, we got an average of 1,012 feet per second. And for the 125 grain jacketed hollow point, we got an average velocity of 1,032 feet per second. And all of these were loaded with the same exact charge weight, seated to the same exact distance from the lands, so seated with the same setting on a seating die, so very well may have been seated deeper or shallower uh, from the base to the charge, but a pretty uniform distance between the seating die and the lands of the rifling. And so then I, I just added one more number in here. We only got one off of that, and these are exactly the same load. And so with that in account, that reduced our overall average to 1,010 feet per second. Um, so that's pretty interesting data. Uh, same charge weight, same everything, and, I mean, drastically different results. Uh, and, I mean, hopefully that lends a little bit of... Uh, clarity to why manufacturers have different load data for different bullets and why manufacturers urge us to be so careful uh, with what we're doing here is uh, you get drastically different results. I would be very interested to, in the future, get some 9mm, some 355 or 356 caliber XTP bullets from Hornady and load those to the same charge weight and compare them against the 357 ones in those particular guns. Um, and and another thing to to note is that it's not just differences in bullet shape, construction, um, density, hardness, etc., um, but also differences in various guns and bore diameters and. Um, land depths versus the grooves you know which is the actual bore of the pistol versus the the height of the lands um, there's just so many factors and and it really uh got illustrated good here although the the video is far from our best work i mean it it's not like uh a zillion people are going to view this anyway but the few who do hopefully it'll uh it'll put a little little clarity to the wizardry that is um, pressure curves and velocity and load data. So, all right, thanks for coming out.